There are days I feel like a walking display, an outfit on a sales rack, and strangers pull and tug on me, asking themselves what outfit they are going to try on, which body they will feel out for their own. Years ago, I know my ancestors were talked out of their skin, tricked into experiments, put into zoos and circuses, dragged from their graves onto autopsy beds, unwilling to di- unwillingly dissected after death because the people just didn't like how they used their last breath, that they chose to rest instead of give their bodies to science. These words, if only I had yours, I would know what to do with it. It's a spell to snatch every one of our cells and mold it into a capsule to swallow. Why don't you do something to your body, your hair, your face, if only I had your skin, your curls, I would. When the women in my family fought so I could do what I wanted with my body, how many of us black women are born children of Medusa, blessed to be appalling, yet watch our hideous heads be cut off and worn by the women we discuss? The same white woman who told us if they were us, they would flood institutions with affirmative action and did, while we stayed while we saved the, the 10%. At the age of 16, someone told me if they were my age, they'd fix my face, behave. Then got a freckle-faced white girl who devoured my attitude, a record deal, and millions of views. My wrong must be right if every day. Someone is trying to convince me to sell myself so they can fashion it. Wow. Powerful point. And there's always, you always have social context and everything within your point. So this is for all of you that are listening. What advice would you give to folks that are in leadership positions? Because like I said, uh, whether it's you in the NASCAR, uh, Melissa, or whether it's you with the elderly care, um, excuse me, Phyllis, or whether it's you, Stafford, as a business owner, or whether it's you, Ashley, as a poet, what advice would you give to folks that are in leadership if you could have a moment of their time? You could talk to anybody in leadership, whether that's in the Congress, whether that's in the White House, whether that's whatever, but what advice would you give them and uh, what would you love to tell them? I I would love to tell them, do what is right, not what's convenient, Mm. because unfortunately Mm. we have too many people playing partisan politics and they're not doing Mm. what's Mm. right. So that would be in a nutshell what I would say. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, what I would say is that, you know, it's, it's a, as much about yourself and your own family as it is about everybody else's because ultimately we're all connected. So if you think that, that you're legislating mm-hmm. for, you know, for, for other people or not legislating for other people, in reality you're legislating or not legislating for yourself and your own loved ones. That's very true. Mm. And Melissa? I'm a stickler for education. We need to educate our children, not just have them warehoused in schools that are underfunded and our children are not learning. Mm. We need to encourage education because those children are our future. And unless they're educated, they won't be proper leaders. They won't be proper educators. They won't be proper doctors. Everything will become about mm-hmm. the money, the profit, as opposed to, you know, really having an impact in society. So we need to really get behind legislation and create a standard for education, which we're, we're supposed to be the number one country, supposed to be. At one time we were. How come mm-hmm. our children are so poorly educated? Well. Wow. And what about you, Ashley? You're, you're just out of school, but you're, even as a young person, a lot of times I'm amazed at the advice that I get from young people that is even just as pertinent as some of those from our elderly citizens. So as a young person, what would be some of your advice? Well, I would say just be your own advocate no matter what you do because I believe if, if it, it becomes difficult uh, to gauge one's moral com- compass or – you know, how respectable they look in this society because we live in a capitalistic society that's almost cannibalistic. So in that sense, the best advice is just to look out for yourself because you're living in a world where people are constantly trying to consume you and throw you away. Wow. That's very true. 
Um, yeah. Actually, before before we get out of here and everything, because I got about eight minutes, and then I want to get from all of you, uh, kind of like ways that people can stay in touch with you and things of that nature. But before I get out, I do want to get at least one more point from you. Actually, that's part of the reason I got you on is I wanted to get at least my. I'd love to have my creative people, at least one of them, on the show. So if you can give us one more point, I would appreciate it. And uh, just pick your topic. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the one about going to the PWI. So if you want to do that one, that's cool. But if you want to do another one, that's cool, too. Oh, Lord. You mean the savages one? Excuse me? Are you talking about the yes. savages one? Yes, yeah, savages. Yeah, I can do that one. I'm pretty sure I have oh. Okay, let's see. So it goes like... Oh, they're savages, savages, they're leaving humans, jack them from our shore, they're not like you and me, which means they must be evil, we must sound the drums of war. Those words my roommate spoke can never be drawn back. The shots rung throughout my body, they flowed down the tongue of her ignorance as she spat saliva Bible passages to salvate my indigenous instincts so my identity would be easier for her to stomach. You eat like a savage. I have to become more acceptable to society. Each part continent you spoke sounded like correctional facilities. Metal ropes African Americans are hung through in orange jumpsuits and bonds that put them in their place like the bands of dollars that jails count. Underneath the terrain of your white privilege, my roots are splitting pavements and pumping drums of war to my heart louder than your police sirens. You think your money can control me like slavery, that your dollar signs can chain me to your colonies. Don't you feel so amazing? I bet helping me, helping me feels a lot like saving children in Haiti or finally paying attention to the aftermath of Coney. I am not your charity. You will not auction me away from my mother by telling me you would have done a better job at raising me in this world with swollen pus wounds of whips are enough to distinguish my heritage. The rotting of strong, opaque flesh and your neglect isn't a good enough explanation to why Martin Luther King has a holiday. How many young black men and women will have to be gunned down for you to realize I'm making a difference. If a black man is hung at 90 degrees, how many swings will it take for you to see my history? This is not the blind side. That is the majority. There are specks from your color spectrum that actually spot me. I paint graffiti from the watercolor of my tears on your blank canvases to show you I was never chipping. The Bronx is still burning. In Virginia, Nat Turner still lives in me. And your ab- abolition abolishes my identity. I feel like an offering being passed around by your bidding. How many people in my family do you have to buy until you own me? I feel the squeezing of nooses around my neck as you try to fit me into a suit more your size, as if my people haven't had to bleed enough so I could sit among you bulletproof. Well, that's nice, but I heard that some slaves love to be slaves because their masters are so nice to them. You think you know me because you took African-American studies? Your halo of light burns me like those old crosses in D.C. You can't control me. Doesn't my American name already baptize me into the red, white, and blue? You branded on my ancestors' flesh. Savages, savages, barely even human. Funny how in this world people still don't get it. Wow. Like I said, that's always one of those powerful points that you do and everything. It's a very amazing um, like I said, we got about five minutes to go, so I want to go around the table with one more time and everything. And if everybody, and I'll start with, uh, I'll start with the lady first. So uh, we'll go with Phyllis and then uh, Melissa and Ashley, and then I'll come back to um, Stafford. So uh, if y'all will tell folks how they can get in touch with you if they want to continue this conversation. And, of course, as I always say, because uh, we're building this audience up and we always are willing to have you back on a regular basis. Melissa, you said you've got some stuff that will be announced in the future, so we hope that when you make that announcement, you'll definitely make it here with us. But uh, if you'll let folks know how they can reach out to you. So, Phyllis, if you'll let folks know how they can find you on Amazon or just in general, and then we'll go from there. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So the name of my book is Overdue Quality Care for Our Elder Citizens. Um, it is on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, people can reach me at uh, phyllis at voiceforeldercare.com. 
Um, my website is www.voiceforeldercare.com, but the email address is phyllis at, that's P-H-Y-L-L-I-S, at voiceforeldercare.com, and they could reach me at 203-594-6878 or 203-886-6934. Appreciate you. Uh, Melissa, how can folks reach you? And uh, maybe they want to be a driver. Maybe they just want to help you in business. Maybe there's a big-time donor that wants to actually invest in your company. But however they want to do it, how can they reach out to you? Did, did we lose Melissa? Yeah, she fell off. All right. Well, I'll find that on the website and everything. Uh where was that? Ashley, how can folks reach you if they're interested in learning more about your poetry and are interested in continuing the conversation and even learning more about your poetry and what you're doing in life and everything? So how can folks reach you? Yes, so you can follow me on Twitter at Alchemist Negra, like uh, Full Metal Alchemist, and then Negra, like Black Woman. And then you can follow me on IG. It's the same thing, Alchemist Negra. My name on Facebook is Ashley Bosman because I love chatting with Bosman. And my website is AshleyTheAlchemist.com. And you can find If the Hero of Time Was Black at Barnes and & Nobles and Amazon. And uh, what about you, Stafford? How can folks find you? Uh, they can reach me at Santa's, just like me. That's Santa's with an S at the end, uh, dot com. And I can be reached at 919 919- Five eight three seven nine zero zero. If you want to go to see me on Facebook, it's Black Santa NC. And I know that you can find Melissa on Facebook. It's Melissa Harvell Lebron. You can also find her on Twitter as Dream of Sixty Eight. And of course, there's other social medias as well. I believe she's on Instagram and things of that nature. And like I said, we're hoping that she'll be back as she makes more announcements about E2 Northeast uh, Motorsports, which is her company. So uh, definitely uh, looking forward to hearing from her as well. Um, any uh, parting thoughts for any of our listeners that they just want to share with the audience in the next two minutes that we've got before we head off? If you got any parting thoughts that you want to share, and I'll go backwards. So we'll start with Stafford. Any parting thoughts that you want to just leave the audience with? Um, it's not too early to start booking for Christmas. I've already got people signing up for <laughs> dates, and the dates are starting to get <laughs> uh, fewer and fewer. So now is the time to call. Don't wait till November. That's very I- true. You just never... No. Go ahead, Ashley. You can't write unless you read. Very much true. And uh, what about you, Phyllis? Any party thoughts that you want to share with folks? Absolutely. You know, I'd love to, if anybody reaches out, um, you know, I, I work with individuals and families in helping them make better decisions for their loved ones in terms of long-term care, memory care, uh, short-term rehabilitation units, and, um, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions and give anybody any advice. And um, I also have program. Uh, by the way, at the back of my book, there's a download so that there's a free download so that people could get tips on, you know, what to look for if they're looking for care for their loved one. Definitely. And we'd love to have you back on at some point to talk about some of the, the tips that you would give and everything. I definitely enjoy some of what you shared, but we'd love to hear some of those tips as well. So we'll definitely have to have you back on in the near future as well. And uh, next week, I think we've got folks talking about black cotton and the black farming industry, as well as Charles Fanoff, who is a theater person here in the area. So we've got a other guests as well, but that's two of the folks that I believe I've got scheduled for next week. So we're looking forward to more powerful discussions on next week. Um, Nikita Middleton, who is a PR lady and author, should also be joining us. I heard from her by uh, email. So we've got some more amazing guests, Dean. So uh, looks like we'll just be continuing these great conversations that we have on a regular basis as we continue to grow this show on a constant basis. So as I've said before, all of you that were on this show, we would love to have you back on in the very near future, and uh, if you have any announcements or anything that you want to share, know that you're always welcome. Any parting words on your side, Dean, as we get the raise to wrap it up? Well, you know, uh, as always, we thank all of our guests for being with us tonight. Very interesting conversation, and we'll be back again next week, same time, same place, here at blogtalkradio.com. You can catch the replay tomorrow afternoon. Uh, from 2 to 4 on the Skyhawk Radio Network. 
So that's the replay of the show tonight. And then we'll be back in seven days. And like.